I would love to listen to the full version of the Marseillaise. The Marseillaise is the national anthem of La France. For most of my adult life, I've been a francophile, which is a person friendly to France or French culture, which eventually led me to being fluent in the French language. I've been in Paris many, many times, and it remains to this day my favorite city. My knowledge of art is practically zero, but I must admit, when I took my first French course in the 80s in Aix-en-Provence in the south of France, we did learn about artist Paul Cézanne, who came from this particular region. One of his most famous paintings is Mont Saint-Victoire, which is just outside Aix-en-Provence, a mountain which I climbed. More about Paul Cézanne later in this vlog. According to one source, the top three French artists in reverse order are Paul Cézanne, Henri Matisse, and Claude Monet. So when I went to the Detroit Institute of Arts, I was thrilled to see an exhibit on French artist Claude Monet. You might be tempted to pronounce it Manette, but in French, only words ending with the letter C, R, F, or L are pronounced. The rest of the words, you don't pronounce the last letter. said that Claude Monet completed about 2,500 paintings, drawings, and pastels. Of these 2,500, granted many have been lost, but how many does the Detroit Institute of Arts have? Well, exactly one. And this is it right here. What you're seeing right there, this is a Claude Monet painting owned by the Detroit Institute of Arts. Soul painting by Monet in the DIA collection, known for over 100 years as Gladioli. Okay, let's end the vlog right there because that's the big story. They only have one. So why have a Monet exhibit? Well, evidently, they must have borrowed paintings and drawings and pastels from other galleries for this exhibit. So let's have a look. <music> So when you look at this painting, does it give a clear picture? Is it a photographic likeness? Uh, not really. Even more extreme is this painting from Monet, Sailboats on a Lake. It really looks like the artist's impression of what he's looking at. Monet was famous for his water lily paintings, again letting his impressions run wild. Compare that with this. This is almost like a photograph, more like the traditional art we know. Artist's impression of what he's looking at? Well, that gave rise to Impressionism, an artistic style that seeks to capture a feeling or experience rather than to achieve accurate depiction. Monet became the central figure among a group of artists who in the 1860s and 70s formulated this radical new technique for creating art inspired by modern life. They were known as the Impressionists. And that brings me back to Paris. We all know that life can be hectic and expensive in the center of a big city. So Claude Monet chose to live in Argenteuil, located only 12 kilometers from the center of Paris, for a suburban life, which was the theme of these paintings. The town itself, as well as its bridges, promenades, and scenic riverside views provided Monet with endless source of subject matter. Like I say, I'd been in Paris many times, and I only had the vaguest idea of Monet. I had no idea he was associated with Argentoy. Had I known, I would have gone there. It's so close. So join me as I view some of the 11 carefully selected paintings by Monet and his artist friend, Pierre-Auguste Renoir. Images of boats on the Seine and bridges of Argentoy are featured in this exhibit. The artist aims to capture the fleeting sensations of changing light, wind, and water.
painting in his own backyard in Argenteuil, done by fellow impressionist Pierre Auguste Renoir. <laughs> me back to the one Claude Monet painting that the Detroit Institute of Art has, which was painted in Argenteuil. Just look how beautiful this display is. For nearly a hundred years, the Detroit Institute of Art has called this painting gladioli, but recently someone decided to read an inscription on the back of the work, indicating that it was part of an exhibition in 1877 under the name Corbeil de Fleurs, which I translate as flower basket, but the Institute of Art calls it rounded flower bed. Go figure. But on second thought, when you look at the painting, rounded flower bed is a better name than the French translation of flower basket. But it was this exhibition in 1877 where the artist self-consciously first adapted the term Impressionists. So we have a gem of an exhibit here. So yes, Impressionism that sparked an international group of followers and revolutionized Western conceptions of painting, but not everybody was a fan of Impressionism. And that led to post-Impressionism in the 1880s. It was led by Paul Cézanne, Paul Gaudin, Vincent Van Gogh, and Georges Seurat. They rejected Impressionism's concern with a spontaneous and naturalistic rendering of light and color. Instead, they favored an emphasis on more symbolic content, formal order, and structure. However, they stressed the artificiality of the picture, as did the Impressionists. Now, I realize at this point I said nothing that the average person could understand. And especially when you look at Paul Cezanne's paintings, which seem more Impressionist than the Impressionists. If you've hung in to this point, congratulations. And thank you for viewing a thumbs up and hitting the alert button on the subscribe. Next Friday, I'm still going to continue with the theme of art but I'll show you a type of art here in Detroit that I guarantee you'll find nowhere else in the world. Have a great week. I finished this vlog on Thursday, November 22nd, which is the American Thanksgiving Day, and here's a photo of me holding a turkey that President Trump did not pardon.